All right, let's talk about the having clause. So the having clause is used to filter groups of data from SQL. So when we use the group by clause and uh, the aggregate functions, you know, we're, we're grouping data and getting some summary information. Now that we have that summary information prepared, we can use a having clause to filter out uh, certain rows that were um, generated from the group by. So a good example we can talk about here is is how many line items are in a sales order detail record. So when I run this query, you're going to see that there are a couple of sales orders that only have one detail line, right? So the count's one. Now let's say I want to eliminate those from my query. I only want to look at sales orders that have multiple lines. How can I do that? You might think I can just say like use a where clause, right? So I can say like where count um, sales order detail ID is greater than one. Makes sense. We're used to using the where clause. When I run that, you'll see it says an aggregate may not appear in the where clause unless it's in the subquery. Okay, we'll learn about that stuff in a, a later uh, course. Um, or it can be in a having. So there's our hint. So rather than using a where clause, what I can do is I can use a having clause. And the having clause goes behind the group by. So it would go right here. And then says saying where I say having. So what this statement's going to do, it's going to group by um, our our sales by sales order ID, do a count, and then once that result's been um, put together, it's going to inspect each row, it's basically a summary row at this point, and only show us rows where the count is greater than one. So let's run this. And you can see here now we're only getting sales order details where the count's greater than one. So I guess just to further nail this home, I'm going to change it to where the sales order ID is greater than 10. So we should see a lot of these rows drop out. And now you can see that I'm only getting counts that are greater than 10. So I'm going to go back to uh, the sales order table here. And I'm going to let's look at the data real fast. And I want to come up with another example for you. I'm just going to do a let's get a bunch of quick survey of some fields here. Alrighty, so let's say we want to um, only report on certain products. So I'm going to do like products that are um, like 714 and 716. So I could count sales orders where um, I could say product ID in 714, 716, right? And I could say having a count greater than one. Let's run this and see what happens. All right, so what this query is doing, and this is important to understand, is it's, it's running this in several steps. So really the first step is to select all sales order IDs from the sales order detail table where the product ID is either 714 or 716. So that would be this query right here get rid of this count so it's running this query with the where clause once it's done this it now does that group by that we talked about so now it's going to group by the sales order ID and bring those sales order detail records together so there's if you were to go through this there's several of these that can be grouped together if we went and hunt and pecked for them. 
And when it finds those, it's then going to do a count on them, right? So now we're going to do a count on how many rows we're finding. And then what we're saying is now output when you have a count that's greater than one. So in English, it's really saying, show me all sales orders where both the 714 and 716 product are in that sales order. The reason I wanted to show this query is not for to answer the question of, um, you know, show me all sales orders where these two products are, are in that sales order, because I think we would use a subquery to, to do that. It's a little more direct, but it's really so that you understand the order of operation with these statements. So it's really the um, query engine's going to first do the select statement using the WHERE clause to bring back a set of um, rows from the sales order detail table. And then, once it has that set of rows, it will start to summarize them using the GROUP BY clause. And in doing so, it'll use the COUNT and calculate COUNT for each of those groups that it discovers. Once it has a COUNT of the groups, it will then apply the having clause to those statements and only return rows where we have a count greater than one. Let's do one last query. I'm going to start out with a query where we calculated the extended price from the sales order detail. In this query, we're essentially taking the unit price and the order quantity and multiplying them to get the extended price. You've also seen how we can group by the sales order ID and sum the unit price and order quantity to get like a total price for the order, right? So we in the past had actually totaled up, for instance, all these amounts to get the total price. So we're going to do that again, but what I want to do is I only want to show sales order that have extended prices whose, whose average is greater than 500. So really I'm looking for sales order that where each line item on average is greater than $500. So how can I do that? I can do that using a having clause. What we'll do is we'll group the data to get the total price. And then I can then um, use a um, having clause to calculate an average across those extended prices and compare that and make sure that that average is greater than 500. So let's start that process. I'm going to keep this query here, create a new query. I'm going to bring this one back in and now we'll just kind of fix it up. I know I need to do a sum of the unit price times order quantity. Uh, we're going to call that total price. So we'll do that. As you can imagine, this query is not quite done yet. What's it missing? It's missing the group by. So we'll put that in. So we're going to group by the sales order IDs, right? And now when I run this query, I get all the sales order and the total prices. You can see there's 31,000 rows. However, I just want to see sales orders whose average extended price is greater than 500. And as you recall, I can use the having clause to now do a filter on the total price on this grouping. So I can say having and I can say average and we will do unit price greater than 500. So the cool thing here is is that my having clause filter criteria doesn't have to be the sum here. 
my having can actually use any aggregate function in it and apply that against the grouping. So I'm going to put the sum here as the total price. And just to show you how this works, let's um, show the average price, right? Now let's run it. And you can see I have the total price and the average extended price. So if I was to change this to like $1,000, I'm going to have a lot of these drop out. I could even change it to, let's say, uh, $2,000 and see what happens. There we go. And now let's order it. order and descending order by total price and you can see the average extended price so I could even make this even higher let's make it like uh, $5,000 see what happens so here you can see now I have a query that's operating on many different levels it's summing the unit price and order quantity within sales order ID to get a total price. We're also calculating the average um, extended price across or within a sales order ID. We're also using that average to filter out some of the summary items that are generated from the group by. And we're, in this case, showing only sales orders whose average extended price of a sales order detail line is greater than $5,000. I think it's key to point out that this average doesn't have to be in the select statement. I can do a sales order ID with the sum and then show the average and this will still work. If I didn't want to calculate the total price and I just wanted to see the sales order IDs for those items whose average or yeah average extended price is greater than 5000 I can do that and now I'm just going to get a subset of sales orders uh, with no uh, total but this may come in handy because maybe all you do is need this list for another purpose and there's no sense in calculating the sum if, if it's not needed so I think this really also shows that I can use the aggregate function without it being listed in, in um, the select statement, nor do I need to have any aggregate statement listed in that select statement. The halvings really um, predicate on the fact that I have a group by, and this average is being calculated based on the sales order writing.